On December 7th of 1941, the Japanese military launched a surprise attack on the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. This attack brought the United States into World War II and marked the beginning of Japan's aggressive expansion in the Pacific. Hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor, Japanese forces launched an invasion of the Philippines, a U.S. territory and vital strategic location in the Pacific. The Battle of Bataan in the Philippines took place between January 7th and April 9th of 1942. American and Filipino forces, led by General Douglas MacArthur, fought to defend the Bataan Peninsula against the invading Japanese army. The battle was characterized by intense fighting, desperate resistance, and severe shortages of supplies for the Allied forces. It was during this time that William Dias, a pilot in the United States Army Air Corps and commander of the 21st Pursuit Squadron, would earn his moniker as the one-man scourge. Despite limited resources and P-40s on Bataan, Dias made the most of every opportunity to retaliate against the Japanese. Dias's relief pilot later reported that on March 3, 1942, Dias took his P-40, which was a versatile fighter plane used during the first half of the war, hung a 500-pound bomb onto its belly, and started out to bomb and strafe surrounding Japanese forces. Dias made three trips, not allowing his relief pilot to fly. He missed the ships with his bomb, but hit a small island on which supplies were stored and blew them up. He strafed troops and docks and caused a lot of casualties. On that day, Dias single-handedly sank a 12,000-ton transport, severely damaged a 6,000-ton vessel, and even managed to take down two 100-ton motor launches and several loaded barges, along with the supply dump. His aptitude as a pilot made a significant impact on the war effort. But as the battle progressed, the American and Filipino forces found themselves greatly outnumbered and cut off from reinforcements and supplies. The lack of support, coupled with the relentless assault of Japanese forces, placed the defenders in a precarious situation. Realizing the dire circumstances and with little hope of victory or reinforcements, Major General Edward King made the difficult decision to surrender on April 9, 1942. Approximately 75,000 Filipino and American troops laid down their arms and became prisoners of war. However, Dice chose to stay with his men rather than evacuate. The surrender of Bataan marked the beginning of the infamous Bataan Death March. The Japanese military forced the captive soldiers to march approximately 58 miles from the Bataan Peninsula to San Fernando, where they boarded a train and were transported in cramped and unsanitary boxcars farther north to Capas, forcing the POWs to march an additional seven miles to Camp O'Donnell. During the week-long march, the prisoners endured extreme hardships, including lack of food, water, and rest, and faced brutal treatment by their captors. Of the estimated 75,000 prisoners who began the journey, only 54,000 remained when they reached their destination. Many died from exhaustion, disease, starvation, dehydration, beatings, shootings, bayonettings, and beheadings. Unfortunately, the suffering had only just begun. Within two weeks at Camp O'Donnell, thousands of prisoners lost their lives. Prisoners who weren't killed or sent to Japan to perform slave labor withered away. Many were worked to death. He was later transferred two and a half hours east by truck to Cabanatuan, and by November 7th, 1942, he was at the Davao Penal Colony on the Philippine island of Mindanao. In an autobiography Dias would later write, he said this about the death camps. Starvation was everywhere. Men who had weighed 200 pounds or so now weighed 90 or less. Every rib was visible. They were living skeletons without buttocks or muscle. According to Japanese reports, 1,555 Americans died from disease in the Philippine camps, mainly due to untreated malaria, dysentery, and beriberi. The Japs provided no medicine, wrote Dias. American doctors who were prisoners in the camps were given no instruments, medicines, or dressings. They were not allowed sufficient water to wash the human waste from the sick and dying men. When all hospital space was gone, many American soldiers lay out in the open near the latrines until they died. There were flies by the millions. Nearly one year later, on April 4th, 1943, after enduring episodes of scurvy, jaundice, and dengue fever, with his body covered in sores, an emaciated Dias managed to flee Davao, accompanied by nine POWs and two Filipino convicts, each selected for their specific skills, they embarked on a daring escape. They trudged and hacked their way through jungle, swamps, mountains, swollen rivers, scorching heat, and torrential rain, sometimes moving at a crawl of less than a quarter mile per hour. They battled illness, tropical ulcers, infections, leeches, sword grass, and even a swarm of giant bees. They prayed and pressed on through it all, always casting an anxious eye behind. 
their captors never did catch up with them. They joined a Filipino guerrilla force and proceeded to fight in the jungle for three months before being evacuated by submarine in July of 1943 to Australia, then back home to the United States, returning as a hero, for Dice and his small group had pulled off the only large-scale escape of Allied prisoners of war from the clutches of their Japanese captors. He was awarded two distinguished service crosses, two silver stars, and two distinguished flying crosses. Dias returned to his hometown of Albany, Texas for rest and recuperation in November of 1943. Side note, Dias's disclosure of the death march and the conditions within the POW camps came as a shocking revelation to the outside world. General MacArthur, determined to expose the Japanese atrocities, pleaded to share their story with the global community. However, the U.S. government, apprehensive about the potential repercussions for American and other Allied prisoners, ultimately declined to publicize the account. Whatever the cause, stated MacArthur, here was the sinister beginning of the managed news concept by those in power. He condemned it as a direct challenge to the very essence of freedom of expression and a blatant violation of fundamental human rights. It wasn't until 1944 that Dice's book was released to the public. Once he was well enough to fly again, he began a training mission on December 22nd in 1943 in Burbank, California. During takeoff, Dice lost an engine on his P-38, which required an emergency landing. Instead of landing in a heavily populated area and risking lives, he attempted to land his aircraft in a vacant lot. While doing so, he successfully avoided human casualties. However, he lost his own life in the process. Dice was only 27 years old. Dice Air Force Base in Abilene, Texas was named in honor of Albany's much-decorated war hero in 1956. Dice Air Force Base has a heritage that is often overlooked. However, the men and women stationed at Dice Air Force Base continue to uphold his memory by their ongoing commitment to protect our American way of life. The city in which Dice Air Force Base stands today is proud of its men and women who serve. While there are many war heroes who deserve a video of their own, this one is dedicated to William Dias. We should remember to cherish and honor the heroes of the past. Not only Dias, but every brave soul who has fought and is continuing to fight for our freedom today. Until next time.